Hey everybody, welcome back to Matt Kiteboarding Wing Wednesdays. I'm Tucker and this is Jeff. And today we're going to address the issue of how much wind you need for wing foiling. Uh, now we're going to come at this from kind of a beginner level because if you're an advanced level rider, you probably already know this answer. Feel free to click to our next video and enjoy that one. Uh, but for beginners, we're really going to attack this because we do see a lot of people that are going out in wind that either won't work or is just really challenging to work. Uh, so we're trying to bring this knowledge to you, not in a deconstructive way or anything like that or a negative way, but to uh, help you pick those sessions to come in with the right expectations because riding when it's too light to foil is still really beneficial. You learn a lot. In fact, you can learn more, a more in a lot of ways in those conditions, but uh, you might get frustrated if you think you're doing something wrong when it's really just the conditions that you're challenging. Yeah. For sure. So I think you set the stage real well. We're, we're trying to look at, you know, obviously this is a growing sport and, you know, all, most of our calls are people looking to get into sport. Yeah. And so, you know, you get all your gear and we want, you know, our, our customers and those that are getting the sport to have success. Totally. So wind is, is the number one thing that right. we need to look at. And uh, we've had a lot of discussions about this, but uh, Wind, I, I think, you know, I've been in the wind sports now for 40 years. I know I'm aging myself a little bit, but Longer I think that- I've been alive. Yeah, <laughs> uh, times a few, no. But uh, I think, you know, I have, obviously we'd have some credibility with all my experience of windsurfing, kiting, and winging. Uh, but if you talk to a lot of people that have been in the sport, that 14 knots is probably, you know, that, that golden, golden spot. Yeah. If they're know. being honest, if they're not, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Chucking one to the boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Riding four knots. No, no, four, 14 knots and above. <laughs> and I think as we have this conversation, a lot of people that may be listening to this, knots, what did you just say? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, but we are going to be speaking in knots today, so it's really easy. You have a computer, Google it. You can figure out the difference between knots and miles per hour. But in, under in, 20, they're pretty darn same. They are. They're very close. And like you said, after yeah. you get over 20. So anyways, 14 knots is kind of that golden rule of kind of where things start to get Good, and that means even, I, I would say, even if you're not a beginner, you're a more advanced rider, you know, and, and in the sport, anything over 14, you, know, you start to really enjoy the wind sports. Yeah, yeah, unless you got real specialized gear that lets yep. you ride in less and have a yep. lot of fun in less. Um, but we're not gonna talk a lot about the specialized yep. gear today. You can look at our light wind videos yep. for that. Yep. Um, but for this one, just your basic first setup. Uh, I know at the shop a lot of times we say the ideal conditions are kind of like that 16 to 20 knots. Mm -hmm. Um, in flat water as well, if you can find it. Um, it's worth the drive if you can find a spot that's in that range in flat water, especially as a beginner. You know, maybe once you get, you get your feet wet, get into it a little bit, you know, you can start to uh, explore outside around that or deal with some really, you know, choppy water or some waves uh, and handle that. But as a new rider, I think you want to limit the variables, get out there uh, with a stage set, for success and and that's kind of where that is and, and as you mentioned you know as low as 14 I think it's it's possible to learn in that especially if you're a little lighter like you mm -hmm. I'm 200 mm -hmm. pounds so mm -hmm. you know if I was learning on a five meter like I was back in the day I really like to see 16 knots yeah um, so it's but, yeah, it's but a sliding we would, scale but we would agree though depending no matter what your weight is we're generally talking about people 150 and above and, and take that I mean, that's just kind of a range as you, yeah. adults, you know, as a little bit, you know, that weight range. Uh, that 16 to 18 does make up for the skill. Because as a beginner, you may be a good waterman. I mean, behind a boat, you may charge on yeah. a mountain, you may have some water experience. Yeah, you might have been sail, kite yeah. water your whole life. Yeah. Maybe you're a really advanced foiler. Yeah. It's this still, is a new game, man. It is a new game. Yeah. And so when you're riding up on a foil and not on a board, wind is your friend and in some in some other sports you know like kiting i mean even in kiting there's some similarities to needing more wind when you learn so but yeah the wind is your friend and you need that wind that that range to make up for some of that lack of skill um and so we don't want you to hear this though and think you live in a spot because we get this a lot of calls that yeah. people live in spots where i don't get that wind very often uh, you know, should I average wind is 12 miles an hour at your yes. spot well if you have an average wind of 12 miles an hour there's probably quite a few days that are 15 and above. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, a bunch of days that are zero. Yeah. So when that average is out, you know, that, that's still doing pretty good. And, uh, you know, chances are, you know, there might be a spot nearby too that catches a little bit more wind depending on the direction or just the thermal or whatever. And, 
if you're confused about that or don't know your local spots, you know, talk to the local crew and uh, generally they're going to be really, really kind and, and kind of show you the ropes with how that might go in your local territory. And, that, and that's the key as you're, you're getting in this sport as a newbie, trying to find that wind. And, and, and when you're going to have that forecast, you, you want to plug in with your, your local group, either Facebook group or group me apps. Uh, that way you can, you know, it's a nice group. You know, when, when people are yeah. addicted to the win and we want other people to have that success. Um, so as a newbie, you know, it is important to have that, that community and, and find that community so you can find the, the opportunities w w yeah. uh, when to get in that win range. So yeah, that 16 to 20 knots really will help you again because if you don't you don't have much skill going into it for winging the wind will make up for it to help you to get that board speed yeah. to get up and some of you have been maybe trying the sport for a while or listening to this right now right and you're starting to understand that meaning you want the board speed because initially when you're, you get into winging um you, you get up and just to stand up and you're, you have that wing yeah. there and you start to feel the pull you know that's step one yeah. and you're actually just moving and taxing on the board yeah and then Step two is that starts to really pull and the board starts to gain momentum. Yeah. Whether you're ready for it or not, you start to get on foil. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of new riders will pull against it too hard to try yep. to drive up wind yep. prematurely yep. and that kills all your momentum. So yep. yeah, let that board pull you. Let down. the board build pull the you. speed so you can get that lift off. Yep. And once you're on foil and you have some power on the sail, then you can cut up wind. But well, well that's when you first take flight. I mean, right. I can remember when I was a beginner, it, it wasn't the skill set I was putting into it. It was that wind that you needed. Totally. And we have we have people, and I know people are listening to this video that have been trying maybe in that sub winds that we're we're suggesting and finding it to be a real struggle. I mean, you get up very shortly and you're down right away, or all you are doing is taxiing. Yep. So we're really trying to help you based on our experience and talking to a lot of people and riders ourselves. Yeah. Uh, e even, you know, now that I consider myself to be you know, an intermediate, you know, and, and budding an advanced rider, um, I still like that wind range. When I see 16 to 18 or more, I'm like, ah, this is, you know, I get excited. Yeah. Uh, not that I don't yeah, ride. aggressive. Rip, yeah. mode, rip mode, not cruise mode. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it, it doesn't mean I, I like to go out, you know, when you're addicted to the wind, you want to go on those lighter days. Um, but even as a, a veteran rider, that wind range is a good range totally. you know, for, for, for wind sports. Uh, but don't let that discourage you if you live somewhere that doesn't have that a lot. Because um, uh, you can get gear specific down the road. But we wanted to focus more on this about where is that good wind for, to get up and wing and learn the sport. Yeah, totally. And, and outside of that, you know, I think sometimes people are misinformed too, whether it's a local wind meter, you know, that's just not very accurate. Sometimes wind meters are placed in a funky spot, you know, behind a tree, or if it's blowing south, it reads really accurate, but blowing north, it's not. It's very high Or up. it's super, super high up, yeah, on the top of a mountain or a huge building or something where Lighthouse that's different, yeah, than what yeah. the wind is going to be doing at the water surface mm -hmm. or like we get in the spring, real cold water, you know, it might be blowing 20 at hundred feet but it's blowing four, you know, that, at 10 feet that's and under. That's true, that does happen. So that can happen it and, and it can be discouraging that. if you don't realize exactly what's happening. Like, mm -hmm. I got the wind, I got the right gear, it just won't work. It's like, hey, sometimes it's not you, sometimes it's the, the conditions or, mm -hmm. or you're just misinformed about, uh, you know, those conditions and, and how to read that. But uh, the other thing is, you know, just hearing, hearing people talk, right? Sometimes you hear people talk and they're like, yeah, I can ride in six knots. Well, you gotta read between the lines sometimes. Sometimes people are fluffing it up a little bit and maybe they can ride in six knots, but they've been doing it for five years, right? Like that's a whole nother story than a brand new rider. They have skills that you don't, you know, they have technique, they have probably the right kind of gear for that, for their, their rider weight. Um, and also it could have been gusting, right? So a lot of times when I ride light wind, I don't look at really you know, the sustained wind too much, I'm looking for the gust. Because I know, you know, even if it's blowing five, if I get a gust to seven or eight, I can go ride. Yep. If it's five to five and a half, nope, not gonna happen for me. Yep. You know, even with specialized gear. So, um, yeah, learning that there are a lot of variables at play, uh, and especially as, as a new rider, you know, you're, you're pretty disadvantaged as compared to somebody that's really efficient or somebody that has specialized gear very good point i mean it's like in any sport we have the bell curve we have those the outliers that can cheat the low end and do things that other people can't um but uh, you know i think why we're having this discussion is because you're on a foil and when you think of a foil it's very efficient so you can have fun in lighter wind 
than you can on other wind sports. Just gotta get up first. That's right. You gotta <laughs> get up and ride, you know, and, and feel what it feels to take flight, gain that skill. So we're really hoping that this helps you to be able to find that success because you made that big investment. Oh. You know, you dropped twenty five hundred dollars, twenty two hundred or more, um, and we want you to to have that excitement of what it feels like to get on flight. And we don't want you to be so hard on yourself that maybe it's the conditions that you're learning in yeah. that are holding you back. Uh, and so it was for me. Yeah. First first time I learned, man. Yeah. My first four sessions were a lot of getting skunked. Yeah. You know, and, and it was frustrating. Like this sport is freaking hard. Yeah. Like and I can kite in these winds. Yeah. Like why can't I do it? Well, number one, it was first generation gear, so it was a lot less efficient than the awesome stuff we have now that's purpose built for wing foiling. But also, you know, I was trying to make it work in 10 to, you know, 12 knots, 12 knots, something like that, uh, for a couple sessions. As soon as I had that 15 knots, it's up and riding. Mm -hmm. could ride up wind. I could do my jibes because I was a, an accomplished foiler by that Power point up. from kiting and wake and surf foiling and all that. But, uh, yeah, I needed the wind, even as somebody with a lot of foil experience and a lot of sailing experience sure. as well. So I would agree with that because I came in with that experience too. And as soon as I hit 18, 18, 16, 18, I found success. Yeah. So, And then once you do find success, and if you could drive a little further, like you said, or find an area, um, or even take a vacation or drive somewhere where there's more wind, it's worth it. Because if you can get the skill when you learn in that area, then you c it does open it up where you can ride in the lighter conditions yeah. with the same gear. And if you get really into the sport, which some people do, then you can get gear specific. Totally. And we have other videos on that, but hopefully this helps some of our beginners out there that are, are uh, been watching YouTube, which can be good and bad. You have to be careful with that. But yeah. we're trying to put the put you know the meat the meat on it here that what you really need as a beginner wins your friend, and uh, and you, you need that 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 sixteen to eighteen to twenty not win to find that success. Makes it that much better. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So get out there, find some of that wind, grow your skill set. Start to expand that range. Get out there and have some fun like the rest of us. Enjoy the stoke. Yeah. Talk to you guys next time. Yep. <laughs> what? Why are you leaving? I'm like, dude, I'm out. I'm <laughs> done. We call that OMS. It's only been four hours. Old man strength right here. It may not see it, but it's underneath there somewhere. <laughs>